Praise the Lord. We give honor to the true and living God on this great night of worship. It's Wednesday night Bible study, and we truly thank the Lord for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. And we thank the Lord for just allowing us another time and opportunity to come together in his name to learn his word. Amen. And how important it is. It is so important for the believer in 2024 to be in God's word. We're looking at things escalating in our in our world and our nation. And it's so important for the child of God to be anchored into uh, the kingdom and the things of God. Amen. So we want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Um, tonight we want to get started. We've been we've been engaged as we're going to close it out tonight. We've been looking from since January as we get close out February. We've been looking at thirty minute spiritual protein. We've been looking at lessons designed to jumpstart us into this year. Um, uh, so that we would be engaged and, and involved and, and growing up in the things of the Lord. Amen. And it's just a jump start. Every once in a while you need a jump start. Amen. Uh, uh, you need a jump start to get you to get you moving. And so these lessons were designed to jump start us, uh, to get us moving back and in, 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 in line back up with Jesus Christ as we're getting ready for this year of service and worship and and work unto the Lord. Amen. And so we've been looking at some lessons that has been geared to help us in that endeavor. Amen. But tonight we want to look at our last lesson. Amen. There's so many lessons we could do, but we'll be here forever and we'll be well out of 2024. But we're going to close out tonight by looking at this last lesson. And this last lesson is a lesson that a lot of times is disregarded as a spiritual discipline. A lot of times we, we look over it, amen? Um, we read God's word. God's word, we know, in Bible study, is a spiritual discipline for all believers. We know that. You must be in your word. You must be in Bible study so that you can grow up in the things of the Lord, amen? And, and we know that that's a discipline. Am I right about it, amen? Uh, we know that prayer, we know that prayer is a spiritual discipline. That you and I must be engaged and we must pray without ceasing because prayer is the communication between us and a holy God. We, we know that and how important it is for all believers in Christ to, to have the spiritual discipline of prayer. Am I right? Amen. Worship. We know that worship um, um, through songs and hymns and spiritual songs is a spiritual discipline. Amen. It's a spiritual discipline um, for all born again believers. All who have named the name of Christ should be um, uh, should be involved in, in worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. And we know that that's a spiritual discipline for all believers. Amen. But 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 for some ungodly reason, we dismiss, we overlook, we disregard and we downplay another spiritual discipline. And that spiritual discipline is giving. Amen. We, we, we say the Bible study we need, the prayer we need, I need worship, I need praise songs, I need all that. But when it comes down to the spiritual discipline of giving, watch this, not just of our time and our energy and our talents, but of our money. That's what we're going to focus on tonight. Amen. Uh, the giving of our monies is a spiritual discipline. Amen. For all believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't talk about it enough. We talk about it maybe once a year, something like that. But a spiritual discipline is giving, uh, is us giving those resources that God has so graciously provided us with. Amen. And so tonight, we want to look at uh, a spiritual protein that we want to address tonight. And that is the spiritual discipline. Very quick, a 30-minute lesson. Spiritual discipline and sacrifice of giving. The spiritual discipline, it's a, it is a discipline, amen, and it's a sacrifice of giving, amen, and, and more believers need to get, be engaged in the spiritual discipline, amen. Let's pray. Father, we do love you. We praise you and adore you. What a mighty God we serve from the rising of the sun to the going down, to the going down of the same. You always remain the same, and we thank you, Lord God, for who you are, your grace, and your mercy, and your goodness, and Father God, tonight, Grow us in this area of giving. Give, grow us in this area of recognizing that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell upon it. Grow us up in this area of a sacrifice of giving back first fruits unto you, the one who, who owns it all. 
So, Father God, right now, bless this time. Um, burn off the, the Wednesday dross. Let us settle down in this word so that we may grow up in biblical truth. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why is it that giving is not a priority? Why is it that giving for the save for saved folks? I'm talking about saved, born again folks. Folks who, uh, who are in Jesus Christ. Amen. Why is it that giving... Uh, is no longer something that we do to honor God. Amen. Why is it? Amen. Bible. Amen. We, we love the Bible. Reading the Bible. We love services. Amen. We love prayer. Uh, uh, prayer. And, and we, we'll do a lot when it comes down to fasting and prayer and, and ministry. And we love conferences. Amen. We love revivals. We love praise and worship. But why, is it, why, but why isn't giving a consistent? Discipline, a consistent uh, flow of our worship unto God. Amen. And that's something that we struggle with as believers. And a lot of it deals with uh, the, the sin of pride and ego and selfishness. Amen. But giving is a discipline. Amen. It's a discipline that we should have as believers. Amen. And this is the very and this this is a very didactic and extensive study. That, that it would take weeks for us to do a, a study on giving, amen? And that's not we, what we're try, are trying to do tonight. But we just want to discuss it. We want to look at it from a, from a, a surveyic look, a synoptic look, 30-minute um, spiritual protein look to jumpstart us into 2024. I don't know where your giving is, amen, but I know God has been good to you. I know he's been good to me, amen? And giving should be a priority. So, Let's begin our class by looking at and focusing on uh, 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 giving as we focus on this thing of money, being good stewards over God's money. And let's learn a quick lesson from the, the example set by the Macedonians. The Macedonian churches um, and, and Paul's writing to the church shows forth a great example of what giving should look like. It gives us a great example of what a systematic um, 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 spiritual discipline, uh, sacrificial giving looks like as we look at the example of the Macedonian churches, amen? And over in Second um, Corinthians, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 6, I think we have it up on the screen for you, and I'm going to read it. Look at these believers, and I think it'll, we're going to take about 30 minutes. It takes about, uh, we're going to look at it for about 30 minutes, and it looks at uh, some characteristics of what it looks like when we give uh, sacrificially, amen, and with self, uh, with um, spiritual discipline. It says, and, and now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. Watch them. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord and then by the will of God unto us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made um, a beginning to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. Look what Paul calls the giving of the Macedonians. He called it an act of grace. That's a great word for this, amen? A great word. So as we look at the Macedonians, watch this. We want to see some giving should always be our very best. A quick lesson on this. Giving should be our very best. It should always be our goal uh, to give God our very best. I don't care if it's in your abilities or what you do and your giftedness and, and our worship. God the God of the universe, the God of all creation deserves our very best. Amen. I, was, I made a statement on, on um, Sunday. He, he should even get our very best of our attire, what we wear to church. It should be our very best when we worship. Maybe it's your best jeans, your best tennis shoes, or whatever it may be. It, maybe it's a t-shirt, but it should be your very best. Whatever it is, we should present excellence. It should be excellence that we present to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Amen. And I, and, I, and I pray that you agree with me that God who has saved us deserves our very best. Let's get that out on the table. Amen. He should get our very best. Energy and all. We give the world our very best. Amen. Give the world our energies. Give the world our abilities. 
our talents, but God says, because of who I am and because of what I've created you to be and because where I've designed you to be with me in eternity, I should get your very best. And so with that, giving per excellence, giving per excellence, we see the Macedonian churches. They were giving per excellence, and we look at, we're going to look at very quickly five characteristics of the Macedonian churches in their giving. Now, I want you to understand something. They weren't no rich folks. They didn't have uh, uh, all the money in the world. But one thing that they had in the Macedonian churches, they had God's heart. They had God's heart. And they loved the Lord. That's the key to the spiritual discipline and the sacrificial giving is that you must love the Lord. Amen? And so, as we look at this, this saved church, amen, the saved church should give the Lord their best and their giving. And the Macedonian churches, they modeled this out. The first characteristic we're going to see, I'm going to look at five of them real quick, is that they gave sacrificially. I want you to see this. The key words in the text, if you go back in the text, you can go back and write it down, um, put, your, put your highlighter on it, go back inside your Bible. And don't forget, your Bible is a working Bible. And so you can highlight, just don't be erasing up out of it, amen, of the words or, or adding up to the words, but you can highlight and, and put notes in there, amen. The key words they use is in their great affliction, in their great affliction. That means that the church, watch this, that they were also in the midst of their severe trial in the NIV. That means the church wasn't on easy street. The church was going through like all churches in 2024 go through, just like you and I as believers go through in our own daily living. Amen. So they were going through some stuff just like all of us, but in the midst of that, they still gave sacrificially. Amen. I hear so many excuses of why I can't give or why I don't give, but look at the Macedonian churches. Amen. And they didn't even have half of what we have, but the other key word is that they gave beyond their ability. That means they went outside of themselves. I want you to see the sacrifice. And that's what God loves. God loves when giving goes outside of yourself, when it goes beyond your ability to do. And it says that. It says that they are, that they are in their severe trial. They, they gave, amen, beyond, beyond their ability. And over in verse 3, amen. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability. So we see sacrificial giving goes outside of yourself. It goes, it goes to the extreme. I want you to see that. But the other key word here is in the text is, is they were not expected to do it. They weren't expected to do it over there in verses 12 and 13. If you look at 12 and 13, he says that, that the willingness is a gift acceptable. And it wasn't something that, that Paul was expecting from them. Because guess what? Sometimes when you don't expect it from this person because of you looking at their income, but they went beyond and they did something that wasn't totally expected. Why? Because they wanted to give to the Lord a sacrificial offering. A sacrificial offering is something that you can feel. Amen. So they had little materialistic um, 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 stuff. They didn't have a lot of material things, but in spiritual reality, they had a lot. They didn't have a lot material wise, but they had a lot spiritual wise. Amen. And God, watch this, has blessed his people. Watch this. Now I want you to think about this. God has blessed us with 70,000 80, 90, some of a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You said, Well, now you now you you're all in my business now, Pastor. Watch this. Bless us with 150 grand a year, 90 grand a year. But you know what I realized? That some of us don't even go beyond five percent, ten percent. Some of us don't even go beyond a thousand dollars giving back to the Lord the whole year. But look how Lord has blessed us, amen. And so as we look at this, we see that the Macedonian church. They went beyond what was expected. It wasn't expected for them to give what they gave. Amen. Because if you look at them demographically or social or from a social level, it, you would say they couldn't afford it. But because of their love for the Lord. Amen. And I want you to get this. The best giving comes from those who cannot afford it. Let me say that again. I want you to get that. The best giving comes from those who can't afford it. Look at it. It says in Luke. 21. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw the poor widow. Look at the poor widow. Put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. And these people gave their gifts out of their wealth. 
But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. What are we talking about tonight? We're talking about sacrificial giving. Now, watch this, church. We stand in a great indictment of the way that we give. It's, it's sad. It is sad the way that the New Testament church give. Amen. And, and those who realize that they have been saved from much are those who don't mind giving sacrificial. Let me say that again. Those who, re who realize that they have been saved from much don't mind giving sacrificially because they understand what the Lord has done for them. Amen. If you ever get a chance, look at Luke, the seventh chapter, and look at the lady with the alabaster, the alabaster jar and how she cracked it open and how she used the, the perfume in it to anoint Jesus. Amen. And that was valuable to her. But watch this. He was more valuable to her than what was inside the alabaster jar. Amen. And so she gave her very best. What am I saying here? I'm saying that giving unto the Lord should be a sacrificial giving. That you should feel it, amen? And it should come outside of yourself, beyond what you, your ability to do. Why? Because God has been so good. But the second characteristic of the spiritual discipline of giving, because watch this, giving is a spiritual discipline. Just like reading the Bible, just like praying, amen? If you go to the book of Matthew, you'll see what Jesus says, pray. He says, fast. And he says, give. Jesus says that. Look at it. He says pray, he says fast, and he says give. So giving is a spiritual discipline. The second characteristic is that they gave joyfully. I want you to get this. They gave joyfully. Go back to the text. In 2 Corinthians 8.2, it says, In the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy, amen, and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. This is some great poetic writing from, from Paul, amen. What is it saying here? That they didn't mind giving. It was a joy. It was a joy to give unto the Lord. We got people mad, upset, uh, grudgingly giving, amen, but not these Macedonians, amen. They gave unto the Lord, amen, and it was a joy, and God loves that, amen. Look what the text says in over in Acts 20, uh, 35. And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So the Macedonians, as they show us characteristics of giving in the text, it was a joyful time for them to give back to the Lord. I love 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Look what God loves. God loves it when we give to him the spiritual discipline of giving, and we do it joyfully. Note this, the best giving comes from those who give cheerfully. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Did you give cheerfully all last year? Did you give cheerfully at the beginning of this year? Are you giving cheerfully? Amen? And, and, and the cheerful giving is not forced giving. It's not because you've been forced to do it. Amen. I hear people all the time complaining about what the church is asking me to do. Well, what is the Lord asking you to do? What is the Lord requiring of you? Amen. And so as we look at this, it's not comparison giving. It's not comparison giving. Amen. It, it, it's not manipulated giving where you're being manipulated. Amen. Where now uh, 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 um, you're being manipulated into giving. No, it shouldn't be like that. It should be cheerful, joyful giving. Amen not stingy giving. And so God loves a cheerful giver. So we're looking at two characteristics as we look at the spiritual discipline, amen, of giving. And that's where we need to be, Rooted Bible, and those who are listening. If you're a believer in the Lord, we should be giving just like the Macedonian church, amen, because God has been good to us, amen. It should be sacrificial. It should be joyful. But then third characteristics, and I love this, and I want you to write it down, they gave voluntarily. They gave voluntarily. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 8, 3. Everything's in the text. It says, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, and, and I love this, entirely on their own. Man, what a powerful text. They gave voluntarily, amen, entirely on their own, amen. I, I love this, and this is what God loves. He loves it uh, when we give back unto him 
entirely on our own. Many times of, of not just bringing it to the storehouse, uh, of course, your first fruits, but then also blessing people and helping people and helping those who are, uh, who, who are poor, hope, helping those who are disadvantaged. Amen. He loves it when we give voluntarily. Amen. Look what he says in 2 Corinthians 8.8. 8. It's on the text. He says, I'm not commanding you. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love. I'm not commanding. I want you, I want to test the sincerity of your love. Look what he says here. Amen. By comparing it with the earnestness of others. I want to test your love for me. And that's what God says to each one of us. I want to test your love. I want to test your love for me. Amen. Giving is always based. Watch this class. Giving is always based on free will. Giving is always based on your free will. And that's what God says. He says, I want to test you. Amen. When they built the temple, God, he, watch this, he wanted to test them to see what they would bring. And they could bring anything they want, free will, to show their love towards him. And God says the same thing to the New Testament believer. Amen. How much do you love me? And I want to test your sincerity of your love. Amen. And we got to see giving as a spiritual thing. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and this, and this uh, giving to Jesus must be cultivated and, and produced from a heart that's overflowing. Watch this from the grace of God. That's why, that's why nobody got to tell me to give. Nobody got to command me. I'm going to give because of the grace of God that has been bestowed. I don't care about what this world has to offer, how much I can get more cars and more homes. No, no. What about giving unto the Lord? What about giving unto the Lord? Amen. And, and then truly, in, from a biblical standpoint, the biblical truth, the New Testament church, watch this, the New Testament church falls under free will giving. And we fall after the cross, after what Jesus did. We fall under the dispensation of grace. And so watch this. We have been bestowed witness. We're in this time of grace, and we should be given more than anybody because we fall under God's grace. And it's a free will offering. And so we see here the third characteristic they gave voluntarily. But then there's a fourth characteristic. We're moving right along. Like I said, this is something we could be teaching for the next three months on giving. I just want to get you a jump start into 2024 because maybe you haven't started giving this year yet. The fourth characteristics, they gave persistently. They gave, I love these words. Y'all yeah, look at these words. They gave persistently. Amen. They gave persistently. That means they were diligent in their giving. We should be diligent to give unto the Lord. We should be diligent when the offering comes around. We should be diligent to advance the kingdom of God. Watch this. They urgently pleaded. Watch what 2 Corinthians 8, 4 says. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. Amen. Watch this. They pleaded. We couldn't wait for this time that we can give. And we were looking for this opportunity. Uh, what a great privilege. That's what it is. What a great privilege to build back into the kingdom of God. And we need some more folks in 2024 like that. Amen. Because God has made a way for us. Amen. They wouldn't take no for an answer. Amen. Remind me when, when they was building the temple and, 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 and David had to say, stop, stop, stop. That's enough. You did enough. Amen. And so watch this. We had to see this. Amen. And so in Philippians, we see one thing about the Philippians. They kept giving persistently. We don't have time to read it, but throughout the whole ministry of Paul, you can read that for yourself in Philippians 410 um, through 18. Write that down and look how they gave. Look how they gave unto the Lord. Amen. Read that. Amen. And God, he blessed them, amen, because of their giving. So I want you to see the importance. Watch this. The best giving comes from those who persist. When was the last time you were running up in the church, couldn't wait to give your offering? When was the last time, amen? Oh, we, we, we quick to run into a lottery line. We quick to run into it at a casino. We quick to do all these other things, give money to all kinds of endeavors in the world what we want. But when was the last time you was persistent? You was diligent. Amen. Couldn't wait for the time to share with the Lord's people. Man, that's a powerful text right there. Amen. Amen. And, and, and folks, we see they're persistent because they were folks who had a desire. Here we go. They had a desire to advance God's kingdom. When you're building your own kingdom, you don't care about God's kingdom. 
As long as you're building your own kingdom. But when you have a desire for God's kingdom to advance his kingdom on earth, watch this. You care uh, how people, the, um, when people get saved, how do people get saved? Well, you need, you need um, 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 materials, you need everything else to advance the kingdom for evangelizing, discipleship, and holistic um, made over living, amen, and shelter and food and all kinds of stuff to advance God's kingdom. And when you are persistent, you're persistent because, watch this, the kingdom of God is on your mind and you want to see his kingdom advance on the earth. We need some more folks like that rooted. We need to get like that, amen? But then the fifth characteristics. I love this, amen? What I said, I was going to give you six. I'm only going to give you five, amen? Five characteristics, amen? Fifth characteristics, they gave themselves. They gave themselves. Look what it says here, 2 Corinthians 8, 5. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, here we go, they gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. Here we go. This is it right here. Watch this. This is what motivated them. This is the spiritual key to spiritual discipline of giving. Check out the two marks. The first thing it says, watch this. The first thing that they did, they gave themselves first unto the Lord. That's first. When you give your, when you surrender your whole self and you give yourself unto the Lord, that's the first motivational trait right there. Amen. The mark of a true discipleship. Amen. A new command, he says in John 13, 34, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you so that you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Amen. But then he comes down and the other mark is our true love for God. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother. It goes on. You can read that. Amen. And so as we look at this, these marks of you giving yourself unto the Lord, the Macedonians, they gave themselves unto the Lord. And then they gave themselves unto others. Amen. So as we look at this, the best giving comes from those who give themselves first unto the Lord, first unto God. Amen. And when we totally surrender to God, when Jesus is first, when we love him sincerely. Amen. And, and we see we're able now to operate in this spiritual discipline of Jesus. I remember Jesus asked Peter, he asked him a question. Over in the book of John, he says, he says, do you love me, Peter? He asked him three times. He says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And that's the question when it comes down to giving. Do you, do you truly love the Lord? And I'm not trying to um, um, coerce you or manipulate you, but it's the truth. Because giving boils down to our love for Christ, our love for this great redemption, our love for his grace, our love for this great salvation. That's, that's where giving is all wrapped up in our love for him and our love for others. So with all that said, we saw the Macedonian church, amen? Let's look at, as we close it out, check out the true biblical promises that come from spiritual discipline. There's some promises that you and I got to rest in, and I'm resting in, first lady and I resting in, and God has never let us down. I'm going to tell you right now, he's always been faithful. He's faithful to you too. But these promises right here, uh, as we look at them, there are six powerful reasons for giving, amen? Six powerful reasons, amen? And, and let me go through them real quick. We got a few minutes. Uh, the first one, as we look at, is when you give, and I want you to get this, and I want you to believe this by faith. A lot of, we got a lot of intellectual stuff going, a lot of truth being um, dispensed, but a lot of people ain't put no faith with the truth. You got to believe the promises of God, amen? I believe the promises of God, amen? And so the believer when we are in, caught up in a spiritual discipline of giving, the believer is blessed by God. You are blessed by God. Look what it says again in Acts 20, 35. And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remember the word that the Lord Jesus himself said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. There's a blessing in giving. Amen. And we are blessed by God. When we give, and I want you to get that this evening, amen? But not only that, secondly, watch this. The believer is consumed when you and I give a faithfully we're consumed by the grace of God. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 and 2 again. He says this. He says, brothers, uh, now brothers and sisters, I want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian church. Look at the grace he's bestowed on them. 
In the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their, um, joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Watch this. He says, in the midst of all this in their giving, God has bestowed upon them grace. But look what it says down in verses 6. Going down, he says this. So we urge Titus, just as he had earlier, made a beginning to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything. Look what grace does. Look what the giving does and how God now bestows his grace. He says, and since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, knowledge, complete earnest, and in love, and we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in the grace, in the grace of giving. Amen? Consumed by the grace of God. Giving is spiritual. Amen? But not only that, thirdly, watch this. The believer is, Check out, the, this is a conditional promise. The believer is to receive abundance from God. This is, this is a spiritual law. Look at the spiritual law that he gives us over in 2 Corinthians 9, 6. It's a spiritual law. Amen. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Look at the law. Look at the law. Amen. And, and, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Amen. Look what he says here. God says when you give, God is able, uh, the believer is, is, is to receive the abundance from God. Amen. Watch what it is. God multiplies and gives abundance when the believer sows abundantly. Look at this law. This is a true law here. He says if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. We know that. That's a law. But if you sow abundantly, you're going to reap abundantly. And so as we look at this, we see the favor of God as he gives us the promises of God. But you got to believe that. Amen. You got to believe that more than you believe man. You got to believe God. God is not a liar. Amen. And so as we look at this, we have to understand that this is a great principle. But then fourthly, the believer, when we give, when we operate in the spiritual discipline of giving, watch this. Do you know that we are truly giving thanks to God? That we are thanking God, amen? We're thanking God. God has, he has blessed, it's a shame how we treat him, amen? He has blessed us, amen? And we are thanking him, amen? Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 9, uh, 11 through 12. And it says, you will be enriched in every way, in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion. Through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Mm, mm, mm. And this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Did y'all? I want you to get that this evening. See, we gotta we gotta grow up. We preaching a series on growing up, and we gotta grow up in our giving. Amen. We gotta grow up in our giving. Amen. And we gotta get better. We say we mature. We say we love the Lord. We gotta get better in this. And it says that when we give, it's giving thanks to God, and God sees it. Amen. That we thank him, amen? We thank him. Our spiritual discipline and sacrifice to God and our giving demonstrates, it demonstrates a thankful heart unto a merciful God. I want you to just think about that. As we go into 2024, how is it? How is it? How is your giving? Amen? Are you giving God out of, out of your sacrifice? Or are you giving God out of your abundance? Do you feel it or you don't feel? A lot of times we give and we don't even feel. We just throw something in the thing. We don't even feel. It's no sacrifice, it's no worship. God loves sacrifice. He loves worship. And then the last thing, fifthly, the believer, and this is key, when we give generously, when we fall into this spiritual discipline of giving sacrificially, the believer is a witness to others of how powerful God's grace is. Lord, Man, let somebody receive this tonight. Amen? How powerful God's grace. Go back. Go back to 2 Corinthians 9, 13. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. Did you hear that? You are a witness. What? They can now witness your generosity. Look what he says here in 14. And, and in their prayers for you, for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace of God has given you. Amen. Thanks be to God for the indescribable gift. What, 
Watch this. And now we become a witness. Amen. Get this. Our spiritual discipline is, is giving testimony, testimony or witness to others how awesome God's grace has been to us. The others sit back and say, do you, I see the grace of God. You, you are a blessing, man. You are a blessing. And it, now it's a witness of how awesome God has been to us. And as we show it to others, amen. So as we look at this, and we look at this, uh, this uh, last discipline and, and understand giving is spiritual. Get away from what these people, oh, you giving to the church and all this. Now you giving them all your money. That's foolishness. No, you better be giving unto the Lord. You better be giving unto the Lord. And you better give as God has portioned unto you in your heart. God has made a way for us. Amen. And watch this. And we will stand and give an account for the stewardship of what he has given unto us. Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. So as we close. Amen. As we close, remember the purpose of giving is to grow the believer in grace. Grace is all through this giving grace to grow us in the knowledge of Christ, but also to grow us. Giving is spiritual. It grows us into the image of Christ that now we are a witness of how God's grace has been bestowed upon us. Amen. And so the question is, how is your giving? How is your giving in 2024? Amen. Now, this may not be a popular lesson tonight, and it might not get that many, many people may not even hit it tonight. Amen. But watch this. You can get around it all you want. We will stand and give an account of all that God has placed in our hands. Amen. And so let giving be a spiritual discipline that you are walking in and that you are displaying, amen, to a holy God. Amen. We thank the Lord for his goodness, his grace. We thank the Lord for the jumpstart 30 minute um, series that we've been in. Um, and I pray that you've been growing from it and been challenged in some of these different areas. Amen. We're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. I want to send out the invitation. There may be one tonight. Watch this. You are maybe given, but you don't know the one that you're giving it to. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. He is God's only begotten son. He is savior of the world. He died. Amen. So that you could be free. He died to pay your sin debt in full. Amen. Through one man sent into, into the world. Amen. And death by sin. Amen. And, and sin has spread to all men because all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. But Jesus Christ came. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The one man, Adam, lost us, but the last Adam came to redeem us. And all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I accept the free gift of salvation. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And tonight, watch this. You'll be placed into the ark of safety. You'll be placed into the family of God. Amen. He who believes in the Son has life. He, do, he who does not believe in the Son does not have life. But tonight, you can have life. By putting your trust in the Son of God. Is there one? If there one, call that number on the screen. Let somebody know tonight. Tonight I have surrendered my heart to the one who paid my sin debt in full. And I put my trust in Jesus. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday first, Communion Sunday. When we say to the rooted Bible, come on out, fellowship at the table. Powers at the table, not in the elements, but in the spiritual element of us bowing down. Amen. Recognizing the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and the soon return of a risen Savior. Amen. Come on out. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Be blessed.